Welcome to another math lesson. This is Mr. Polarski. Today we're going to be talking about solving multi-step equations. I work out of the Prentice Hall Copyright 2009 Algebra 1 textbook. This is lesson 3-2. The objectives today are I will be able to solve multi-step equations with grouping symbols and I will be able to solve multi-step equations containing like terms. Let's take a look at solving some equations. In our first example, example 1t, combining like terms, solve the following equations. Uh, like terms are terms that have the same variable and the same exponent on that variable. We need to solve the following equations. Part a, 3a plus 6 plus a is equal to 9. In that equation, 3a and a are like terms. They are on the left of the equal sign. We can rearrange this, writing this as 3a plus a plus 6 is equal to 90. From here, we combine these like terms. 3a plus 1a is equal to 4a plus 6 is equal to 90. Now we have a two-step equation. 4a plus 6 is equal to 90. We first undo the addition by subtracting 6 from both sides. That gives us a, an equation that is 4a is equal to 84. Remember, these cancel. They become 0 because they are opposites. 90 take away 6 is 84. So we continue to solve the equation. It's 4 times a is equal to 84. So we divide each side by 4. 4a divided by 4 gives us 1a. And 84 divided by 4 gives us 21. So part A took an extra step or two because we had to combine the like terms. We could have really skipped this step and identified these two terms as like terms and went right to here. Either way, it doesn't matter. In part B, the variable is on the right side of the equal sign at this time. You can switch sides or you can keep the variable on the right. It doesn't matter. The equation is negative 13 is equal to 2b minus b minus 10. We have to combine these two like terms. Remember, if there is no coefficient, you've got to think of it as 1. So in this case, 2b minus 1b gives us a b or 1b. Bring down the equal sign. Bring down the rest of the right-hand side. So we have 1b minus 10 on the right. Bring down the negative 13 on the left. One more step to this equation. We need to add 10 to both sides. Minus 10 and positive 10. They're opposites. They become 0. So on the right-hand side of the equal sign, we're left with 1b or just b. Negative 13 plus 10 is negative 3. We want to switch this around so it says b is equal to negative 3. Remember, we can check our solutions by substituting into the original equation. I'll check our work to part b to show you how to do it. We take b is equal to negative 3. We take the negative 3. We put it in for these b's up here. So I copy the original equation down and substitute negative 3 in for b. So that will give me 2 times negative 3 minus a negative 3 minus 10 and we'll follow the order of operations to simplify the right hand side 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 minus a negative 3 will give us plus 3 double negative makes a positive minus 10 negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3 and from that we have to subtract 10 and negative 3 take away 10 is negative 13 so the solution does check for part B uh, I did check the solution to part A it is correct moving on to example 2t a real world problem solving situation 
You need to build a rectangular pen in your backyard for a dog or for your dog. One side of the pen will be against the house. Two sides of the pen will have a length of X feet and the width will be 25 feet. What is the greatest length the pen can be if you have 63 feet of fencing? The first part to this is really making a diagram. And you know you're going to need to have a rectangular pen in the backyard. And right here it tells you one side of the pen will be against the house. So that's not going to count towards our fencing. So let's make a diagram. And I find that for Algebra 1 students, this is the hardest thing for them to do is to create a diagram. So here I have a line representing the side of the house. Remember, one part of the pen is going to be against the side of the house. Next, two sides of the two sides of the pen have a length of x. So these sides here, that come off the house, are going to be the same length, and they're going to be a length of x. So when I add those to my diagram, I label those with an x. Finally, and it tells us, and the width will be 25 feet. So to connect these two ends that are the same length, we know it's going to be 25 feet. We need to find the length of these two congruent or these two equal sides. And we're going to do that with the information in the problem. So we got this here. The two sides of the pen have a length of x feet. So... That would be these two sides here. That's how I, where I got it from in the problem. And then here, that the width is 25 feet. So that's where I got that information from, just in case you were wondering. Now, finally, into the question, what is the greatest length the pen can be if you have 63 feet of fencing? So my total amount of fence is 63. So the total amount of fence I have is 63. And I have to fence these three sides. So x plus 25 plus x. I have to add these three sides together to get a total of 63. So x plus 25 plus x. Now I have an equation that's going to require me to combine like terms. So I write down 63 is equal to... At this point, x plus x, that's 1x plus 1x, gives 2x plus 25. The next thing I do is I subtract 25 from both sides. 25 is on the right. Remember, they're eliminated because they're opposites, leaving the 2x on the right-hand side of the equal sign. On the left, I subtract 25 from 63 to get 38. And next, I divide both sides by 2 because this is 2 times x. So I'm going to do the opposite operation. 2x divided by 2 leaves us with 1x. As we write it down, x. And 38 divided by 2 is 19. And since we're working with feet, that would be 19 feet. So x is equal to 19 feet. So the greatest length that we can have is 19 feet. And I really prefer a little sentence. That would be what I would consider to be a good answer. With the work supporting it, of course, but this would be the answer, not just the x is equal to 19 feet. Moving on to the third example, example 3t, solving an equation with grouping symbols. We can see up here in purple, it says using the distributive property to solve. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. To eliminate these grouping symbols, or these parentheses, we need to use the distributive property I do have a video on the distributive property. If you need to learn about it, check it out. So 2 times x is 2x 
remember when we distribute we multiply and 2 times minus 3 is minus 6 we bring down the equal sign we bring down the 8 so the next step is to solve the two-step equation which requires us to in this equation get rid of minus 6 so we add 6 to both sides using the addition property of equality on the left of the equal sign that leaves us with 2x and on the right of the equal sign we simplify 8 plus 6 to give 14 next we have 2 times x is equal to 14 the opposite of times is division so we divide by 2 2x divided by 2 gives x. On the right-hand side, we simplify. 14 divided by 2 is 7. Example B can be confusing, uh, not only because the variable x is on the right-hand side, but because of the signs when we have to distribute. Again, if you're a student that likes the variable on the left, you can use the symmetric property of equality to switch the order of the equation. I'm just going to leave it where it's at. So when I distribute the negative 2, that'll give negative 2x because that's negative 2 times 1 to give negative 2. Then I distribute here. Now listen to how I say this. Negative 2 times minus 24. This subtraction sign is acting as a negative sign when I distribute. So negative 2 times negative 24 will give a positive 48. And I bring down my 16. Now it's a two-step equation. I have to get rid of addition. So we subtract 48 from both sides. Now, remember, we subtract because these will be opposites, and they go away. They become 0. Bring down the negative 2x on the right of the equal sign. On the left of the equal sign, I do 16 take away negative 48. Or I'm sorry, 16 take away 48, which get negative 32. Then I divide each side by negative 2. The reason I use negative 2 is because that's what's being multiplied with the variable, negative 2 times x. Negative 2x divided by negative 2 leave x. And negative 32 divided by negative 2 is a positive 16. So 16 is equal to x. I like to switch that around. So it reads x is equal to 16. Remember? This has been Mr. Pi. That's Mr. Triangle, but how about Mr. Pi? And I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.